Hi you, my name is Dan, and by the end of this video, you'll know what a grid system is and how it influences your web design mockups in Photoshop. This particular video is a free extract from my course called How to Make Money Building Professional Website Mockups Using Photoshop. If you're serious about making money as a web designer, there's a discount code for you in the description. Anyway, sales pitch over, let's learn about good looking grids. Now the most popular solution to handle different browser sizes at the moment is the grid system. And of the grid systems, something called Bootstrap is by far the most common. Now, whether you are using Bootstrap or any other way to build your website, you're probably going to be using the grid system. And that's what we'll use in our Photoshop document. The grid system allows designers to work from a base 12 column grid. Designers can span any amount of those columns to suit their website. Let's take a look at this example grid system here on Edward Robinson's site. You can see it up here. It's called responsivegridsystem.com. Now, what you'll see down, if I scroll all the way to the bottom here, it starts at a base columns of 12. Now, I'm yet to see anybody use exactly all 12 of them unless there may be bullet points or lists or something similar. So what tends to happen is designers end up spanning a few of these columns. Down the bottom here, you'll see that it starts at a base level of 12 columns. And at the top here, you can see we can span those, we can easily span those 12 columns, say six of them and six again, to carve our website in half. And this is a really nice way, 12 is a really nice number because we can cut it into thirds and quarters and sixths, all very easily using the 12 column grid. This is another example here on Edward's site. You can see a couple of uh, example layouts for responsive. Now, this intro page here, forget the heights, okay, because the heights are really short, but see the different cut-ups in terms of the navigation. You can see here, this is where my logo goes, and this other chunk here, this other two-thirds, um, would be where my navigation goes. So this is span at all, and this might be, say, a rotating carousel like they've got written here. These are feature boxes all carved into thirds, okay, so four columns, four columns, four columns, and then my footer would be spanning all three. You can see here's a couple of different examples of ways of cutting out websites. So I've switched here to the Photoshop file that you can download as part of the exercise files. Um, if you haven't done that, do that from the link below, otherwise you can create your own pages. Now what I've done is, watch this, if I go to view, and I go to show, and I go to guides, you'll see that it's been cut up into columns of 12 with a bit of padding in between them all. So I've done it for desktop, tablet, and mobile. Now you'll notice here on mobile, the mobile doesn't actually have 12 columns like the tablet and desktop. We do this because 12 columns on such a small size becomes this dense mass of columns and nobody actually cuts a mobile site up into 12 distinct columns. Now when deciding what pages and what sizes they should be, you can see the desktop here is 960 pixels wide. When you're deciding what size desktop should be and tablet to be and mobile to be, don't get too caught up on actual pixel dimensions because there are so many different screen sizes, it's impossible to group them all together into one exact pixel size. You pick a generic size that fits mobile, desktop, and tablets that are common at the moment, and that's gonna change as time goes along as well. So be prepared for in a couple of years when screen resolutions are all changed or there's a new kind of fablity, desktopy mobile version that you might have to go through and design a separate style to accommodate that screen size. If you are looking for exact dimensions to get started with, then you can download the Photoshop template that I've got in the resources. Or if you're using, say, Bootstrap, you can go and check Bootstrap to see what the media breaks their views, okay? What they consider mobile is, what they consider tablet is. So if we go have a look. Now I'm over at Bootstrap at getbootstrap.com. I'm in the slightly preview version, okay, in version four. At the moment we're up to version three, but version four will be out really soon, so we'll be using that for this course. Click documentation, then go down to layout and pick grid. Now if I scroll down here, I'll get to one, this one here says grid options. You can see here, here's my small, okay, so that'd be mobile in portrait. Then I've got small, which is considered phone at landscape, medium tablet, large is say a laptop screen, and extra large is a really big say iMac screen. You'll see the sizes here are written in this uh, measurement called REM, which is a root M. If you've never used this measurement before, don't worry. Essentially, you take the 45 and you times it by 16. 16 is considered the default size in a browser. So 45 times 16 gives us 720 pixels. And if we go back to Photoshop, you'll see that 
I've used 720 pixels for this tablet. Now when we get up to Bootstrap 5 and Bootstrap 6, they'll go and adjust these things depending on what the most common sizes are. They might get bigger, they might get smaller, whatever's really popular at the time. So that's a good place for us to start for our Photoshop mock-up. Now what I've done for you here as well is that these guides can be a little hard to work with as well because they kind of stretch past the pages. What I've done in here is say you're working on your desktop view, you can toggle this layers down and you'll notice in here I've got this one called helpful column guides. If I toggle that down, I've laid out a couple of basic column grids. So watch this, I'm gonna turn my view show guides off and I prefer to work this way. Say if I'm doing something that is meant to be three columns, I'm gonna click this on, my three columns, and it's just a transparent background so that I know when I'm working with my document, okay, I am dragging it around and I know I'm working within these three columns here. When you finish using the column, you can turn the eyeball on and turn it off on another one to work on a slightly different layout or a different grid system. Now you notice in this tutorial that we're using only three of the sizes. We're using the small, the uh, less than 34 Eames, okay, for uh, portrait mobile, the tablet and desktop. Now we haven't done this one that's in between here, which is kind of a landscape phone, and we haven't done the really large or extra large desktop as well. It's mainly just to keep the time down from this tutorial, and it depends on... I guess the level of complexity your website has. If it's a quick throw up website, you might not spend as much time with the Excel or the small version, which is the small landscape phone version, um, until maybe the site's a little bit more mature. If you are working on a bigger project, then definitely you're gonna be looking at all five media queries and all five sizes here in Photoshop. And that's it for grids. Now, I love to share, so I made a few of these videos free. Of course though, I'd love for you to go on and do my full course of over 50 videos. There's a discount code in the description. Please like and subscribe and hide it our good YouTube people. Now I'm saluting and waving, but you can't see that, can you?